Oh, hey, you guys could go through there. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, bud. Yeah. Oh, this reminds yeah. me of a post down for Dun 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 It's Indiana Jones. <laughs> Oh boy. Wyoming born and raised. True Wyoming guy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Alright, so you're doing the rest of the interview is what I'm hearing. No, I'm <laughs> and then grab your hand. No worries. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going and welcome to another episode of the Overland Garage where we talk about everything overlanding and for this episode I've got a pretty good subject and my good friend Dylan is here and we're we are going to talk about overlanding with kids and I'm I'm talking 10 years and younger the munchkins the munchkins yep so stick around and let's talk about overlanding with kids So a lot of people think overlanding with kids is a, just a big hassle. It is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But honestly, I have been adventuring with my boys since they were born. Literally, uh, my son Deacon, I took him out camping when he was six weeks old. And I thought, why not? My oldest son, Kobe, he went out adventuring, I think, within being one years old. Yeah. Going out and prospecting with mom. <laughs> so, I actually enjoy taking my kids because they get to experience overland, like they get to experience the just the history and the geo, the geology of the world that we have to adventure you know and so i actually try very hard to accommodate my kids in overlanding with my vehicle setups but a lot of people think that it's such a big hassle when really it it, it isn't yeah you, you can get a system to where the kids are helping you even the little ones even the little ones you that's know true. and 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 that's what I would like to hear your, like, you know, your opinion and how you guys uh, go about overlanding with your daughters, because you've got, what? what's your ages? Well, the youngest is now just over one, okay. and the oldest turned three this summer. And my kiddos, I've got 13, 11, and 8, and it's just like, it's insane. Yeah. And, and it's kind of nice, because when they're older... They can help out a they little can bit help more. Out more. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. I'm looking forward to that. As but they next. also have their own things that we gotta accommodate, you know. But right. So let's let's dive into that because that's that's I think a big thing that the it's the younger kids. So so you've got your daughters, and so what do you feel like you've got to to do to kind of accommodate them, you know, on a trip? One of the biggest things that I had to get used to uh, starting to take the little ones camping, especially when uh, my oldest was born and starting to take her out and just even yeah. on little one night trips, not doing anything crazy, just, you know, weekend weekend trips out and hanging out Yeah, is just how much stuff you have to bring. And it's not, I don't say that to say, you know, you got to have everything in the kitchen sink. No. But it is a different mindset of making sure I'm packing okay. Yeah. If I'm cold, they're cold. They don't warm up as quickly. How am I going to help out with right. that? Like right. it's it's a different bowl game to really wrap your head around and yeah. kind of figure out. And but, parents out there, I, I just I just wanna say this real quick. Go for it. <clears throat> Little kids are very resilient. Very. You 
you don't have to put them in a plastic ball and think that the entire world is after them and they're going to get sick. No. They actually can handle stuff sometimes better than we can. 100%. 100%. <laughs> my, my beautiful eldest is a perfect example of that. I was walking around on, well, the one trip we took up the mountain, just a brief little overnight. Yeah. Wife and I fully bundled. We were freaking frigid. She's just walking around happy as can be. She had a little light, you know, windbreaker on, and she was wandering away from the fire. And that's the other thing, too. Even when they're younger, she, was, she wasn't she was quite two yet at the time. She was okay. just, just about one and a half. Okay. And when she was out there, I mean, she knew when she was cold already. She understood. Yeah. So when she'd get cold, she'd come back over and warm up by the fire, and then she'd go out and play in the snow a little bit more, and then she'd come back to the fire. Yeah. And she kind of knew. I mean, sure, she's playing and having a good time. And as a parent, it's you're you're sitting there watching, going, okay, make sure you know. Do you have a hat? Do you have gloves? But <laughs> yeah. They they're okay. They they can kind of figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, one big thing was making the upgrade to the rooftop tent. That for me was a game changer. Uh, just yeah. in comfort space <clears throat> to have them along. Yep. Um, ground tents. There's uh, nothing against them, and if you can get a good ground tent, a quality ground tent that has the room, like they're phenomenal and they're simple and they're light, and that's their biggest thing. Is they're light. They're simple to use. That and that's great. Yeah, but the having the rooftop tent pop up open the back, all our bedding was already in there. Having that much less setup to have to yep. do yep. was nice with the kiddos because then you could toss them in, get them warming up, and yep. they were good to go. Yeah, and and that's one thing that I would say: warm weather or even cold weather, having a spot that the kids know that this is our little comfort space, this is our yep. our little, <clears throat> this is our home. Is a is a is a big thing, and if you can establish that really quickly, you know, like 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 the back seats of your vehicles. This is your guys's area. This is that your toys are here. Everything that you guys want yep. is here, and once they realize that, they're golden. They'll yep. entertain themselves. They'll they'll take care of themselves. Occasionally, they'll ask for food, you know, but yeah, they're they're golden. And then once you get to camp, you know, establish that little your tent or whatever, you know, they're golden, you know? And so what if they pick up a handful of dirt and eat it or suck on a stick? <laughs> it, it, eat the stick. <laughs> it's, it's not going to hurt them at all. No, it you really know? doesn't. <laughs> and the sooner that you get them out, I, what you had said earlier, you know, let them experience um, the history of the area, the geology of the area and start to see, you know, there's more than just a screen. And that's, it's yeah. not to sound... Uh, let's be real here. Okay, I'm, I'm a young parent, okay? I, I'm not going to be the guy to sit here and be like, oh, the screens, because look what you're watching right now. You're on a screen. Whoa, they're, they're not the devil. It's okay. Yeah. But if you want to you make sure that they're also getting experiences in life Hands more than experience. just something on a tablet or, you know, whatever it may be. Yep. And I love coming out here. Yeah, sure, they may have a screen in front of them while we're on part of the drive just to help them fall asleep if they need a nap, 100%. Oh, yeah. But once we're out yeah. in nature, especially my eldest, she doesn't want the screen in the first place. She puts it down, she rolls down her window, and she's looking, Daddy, look at the cows. Daddy, look at the frogs. Look right. at those trees. Like, right. she's curious about things. And that's what's exciting is to see them learning and making those world connections and starting to kind of learn all of that. Exactly. I mean, there was there was one one year that our boys traveled five states hmm. in one year. I mean, and they got to do they got to see amazing scenery. They got to do a tour through a old historical uh, mining mill, pro mm -hmm. a processing mill. They got to see history of old ghost towns like exposing the kids to the history that's out there even just the geology even if you don't go to a ghost town or something you know seeing stuff that is you know away from the highways you know everybody sees what's down the highways getting them past that yeah. they will appreciate that and they will remember that more than what's on a rocks rocks yeah rocks. kids and rocks they will appreciate you know all that stuff more than just staring at a, a tablet or a tv or whatever you know and it gives them learning experiences i mean when we've had conversations of where we traveled that year you know our kids would start saying yeah we went to here 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 and here and then everybody just kind of drops their jaw like you did what yeah well, i didn't even go like 100 miles this year you know like away from home yeah. so it's really cool that our kids have that privilege of saying that 
yeah, we've we've seen this, we've experienced it, we've got to do it, yeah. you know, and and I I feel like. Overlanding is not just for the the singles or the couples. It's family. It's about having that adventure, you know. And and that's the thing. I think it's more important. I, I would I would uh, dare to say I think it's more important. For yeah. Families yeah, it is. You know, to, to get that connection. And there's, I mean, there's nothing like being confined in a vehicle for hours upon hours <laughs> upon hours, and then that evening also being confined in a tent for the entire <laughs> night to bring a family together. Um, no, I don't that, sleep no, with my boys. My boys, they've got their own tents. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, well, when they get bigger, that's what they're able to do. Yeah, exactly. When they're still so little, they, yeah, you can't really quite do that. But there's all, I mean, it, it's just memories. You're building memories with the yeah. kids. You're building memories. And it is, in a selfish way, it's for you too. You're building memories that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Exactly. And then exactly. you're also bri building up that kind of relationship and those kind of memories for the kids. And, um, you know, it drives a hunger in them to explore. Yeah. Right now, my, my little one, or not my littlest one but my my oldest was very upset uh she wanted to be here this week <laughs> oh did she um, nice. but she, her and mom had some other things already going on that they needed to be back home for yeah and but it's it's great to see she was disappointed that she couldn't go yeah it was not no dad i don't want to be there it's fine it was very much oh my, no i mean mm -hmm. she was sad yep Yep. Which isn't good. I don't like making my kids sad. I don't want that. I don't like making my kids sad. But it's good to see that she wants to be out. She wants to explore. She's she's learned that it is fun. It's it's something that she can do and explore and learn. And it's it's constantly, it constantly gets their attention. There's always something new for her to see. You know, and one thing that I like about taking the kids out is don't feel like you have to do everything. Yeah. Let, get them involved and have, give them responsibilities of setting up camp breaking down camp our 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 youngest he's responsible for chairs getting everybody's chairs set up and the only reason why that's his job is because he's not quite tall enough to get the rooftop tent on the trailer sure and 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 our other two boys they have to work together as a team if they want a place to sleep they got to set up their own tent yeah and when it comes time to uh for us to leave they're responsible for putting their tent away yeah. and I, and so we we like to get our kids involved because it also gives them uh experiences of responsibility yeah. you know working as a team so don't don't feel like you have to do everything parents get your kids involved get them to be a part of the you know the camp set up and breakdowns yeah. even cooking and and once you got camp set up you know, then they get the experiences of maybe hunting, maybe fishing, yep. or rock hounds out there. Yeah. You know, kids love yeah. poking around in the dirt looking for those nice looking shiny for those rocks. rocks. And boy, howdy, one of them might be a fossil. They don't know. It might be a fossil. It might be a dinosaur. If you got dinosaur fans, oh, buddy, let me tell you. Right? But, and it is. And it's that kind of being able to do that kind of stuff. And and one thing I will say, too, and this is more, again, this is more for the adults, but it's it's nice to know. When you travel in a group, and I've been on a couple trips, both with you and a couple other groups, when there's kids along, yeah. it adds an element for the travel that is spectacular. Yeah. Especially when multiple couples maybe bring a child or two, and there's a couple of them that they can now learn and play together. Yep. But then you have those experiences happening in camp. It is astounding to me the kind of change in atmosphere that brings to everyone who's there. It does. Now, if you're the kind of individual who doesn't have kids, you don't want kids, you don't want to be around kids, and you go out and you go on a trip and they, somebody brought kids, there are ways that you can, you know, alleviate any stress yeah. that you're going to have. You can kind of stick off to the side, do your thing, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there, there's if you if you're not the kids aren't for you, that's fine. Yeah. But in my experience, it's been. It, I, I don't want to use the word magical. It's magical. But it, it's been imp very impressive when you get a group of like-minded individuals together who enjoy coming out, being a little rugged, kind of yeah. getting off the beaten path, and then you add kids into the mix, they they lose themselves because they're excited to share their experiences with the little one too. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. My daughter, I think it was John, walking him around, looking at stuff, holding his yeah, hand the whole yeah. time that we were on that tag-along tour. Yep. They'd never met before. They were fast friends. And even John, you could see on his face, was just ecstatic. He was enjoying he it, yeah. He, I mean, it's just those yeah. little things. And it's, yeah. and it's great to see that. But and, and also, parents need to be mindful of those people out there that may not want to be around kids. Exactly. 
be respectful of towards their feelings as well and you know make sure that your kids are having fun but also give the people respect that yeah. you know hey kids like let's not bother them you know kind of thing yep you well, know and we, and we had to park d depending on where you're at and what's going on you know if you know you've got louder kids yep we have yep. one who's kind of a hard sleeper it's not bedtime isn't to eat the easiest <laughs> we usually on purpose we'll park a little bit away from everybody else not, yep. we'll, we'll still mingle into our thing but yep. especially once it's bedtime you know we know it's going to be noisy so we try and stay away yeah, do what we can tag along tour we did that all all the the couples that had kids or didn't mind kids, mm -hmm. we were we were off in our own little section away little from pod. the other campers. So we knew that everybody who was in that group was okay with the fact that you've got a yeah a one year old screaming because they don't want to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know why what you just said reminded me of it, but I will also say if you've got a daughter who loves Elsa and that kind of stuff, um, there's nothing quite like letting them sing those songs out standing in the middle of the woods. To them, that's magical. That's yes. life changing. So do that. Um, be prepared to just have that song stuck in your head for ever. Um, but yeah, it's good. So um, I've got my own little ways that I pack my vehicle to accommodate for my kids um how about you dylan what what do you do you feel like it's such a burden bringing your kids with what you have to pack and stuff like like you know how do you go about making sure that you've got what your daughters need sure and is it a burden sure sure uh, i i would say when i was first getting started in it and yeah. when you're first starting out trying to figure out what you're going to be doing that part was stressful learning okay what do i need what am i going to have to bring yeah. but once you kind of figure out the essentials and and you have a a game plan for those essentials uh, we've got so uh, my wife and i we have uh, two bags that go with us okay. if we're taking the girls anywhere it does not matter what we're doing if we're just going for a day trip down to see family all highway you know another big deal or we're going over to grandma's for thanksgiving yeah or we're going out we're going to be out for a weekend coming up the mountain doing something like that those two bags are always grabbed and that has the stuff that at their age is important wipes diapers snacks yep. uh little we've got little vials of milk that we can put in a little fri fridge fridge sack that yeah you put in the freezer and then you put the milk in and then you put that in that bag okay so that they have milk to drink at night and that's that's my girl's thing gotta have it <laughs> and but is it now that we have those two bags set up and they're they're always restocked they're always repacked <clears throat> my wife is incredible because to her it's second nature she packs it i go look at it and i'm like oh gosh what did i forget oh no <laughs> but i'm chaotic and she's you just got it handled as far as the camping setup and the vehicles i'm building a trailer um nowhere near as fancy but i'm building a trailer after being inspired by yours <laughs> thanks and the entire point of that was just to ha be able to bring some more creature comforts for the family because i yeah. like to spoil them but especially if i'm just bringing my eldest and me and her are going to take a daddy daughter weekend just go s camp somewhere yeah as long as i've grabbed those two bags and i have an idea of what i'm going to have for a meal it, it's no problem at all. I have enough bedding. She sleeps in there. She's got her own blankets. Um, and that's something I'm used to. I guess I'll, I'll make that comment. Blankets. Have extra blankets. Just bring them along. Just grab <laughs> any that you got. Yeah. To me, it's second nature. Now, I almost wasn't going to say anything, but I reminded myself. Just bring extra blankets because when they're sitting in the car, if you're plenty warm but they're cold, toss a blanket on them. If they just yeah. want that extra snuggle, if they yeah. fall asleep. And then when they're in bed with you at night, having those extra blankets just to like kind of tuck around them keeps them from moving so much and kicking you in the face as much and that is gold right there nice so nice. but yeah as far as long as i've got that kind of stuff we really haven't had a problem so you would recommend for for those who are just getting into overlanding and they want to bring their kids develop a a a, a basic system to where like you're saying two bags you know you've got enough things for a couple of days and and you know that that is guaranteed going to be in the vehicle exactly. develop a develop a little bit of system it might take a little bit of time mm -hmm. but go through and and one one of the things that i uh, like doing and i've recommended to others is you know with starting with kids bring what you think you might need okay go home after your trip and say did the kids use it yeah did exactly. the kids use it if they did Put a sticky note on it or something. Yep. And then everything that doesn't have a sticky note, I don't need to bring that anymore. Exactly. You'll find how little entertainment or what little kids need 
to entertain themselves. Yeah. You know, and, and then that's and that's a really good way to go, okay, now I know that I've got these two bags or three bags or one bag, whatever, yeah. but everything in this, I'm good. The kids are, are perfectly taken care of. Well, and I don't know about what you've experienced. Maybe you can shed some light as well. One of the things that I was kind of surprised with, but it, looking back on it now, it kind of makes sense. Okay. But at first I was shocked. Other than bedding and food, when we're going out, we're going camping with the kids. The bedding and the food are the two extra things that I would pack compared to going on a vacation. You're going to go to a hotel. You're going to go <coughs> stay at grandma's. All the other stuff is anything you'd pack for the kids anyway. A little bit of entertainment, clothes, yeah, yeah. you know, just that kind of stuff. The only difference is now, okay, I need to, we're, we're cooking ourselves. We're going to bring food along and a way to handle that. And yeah. then we're sleeping in a tent or we're sleeping in whatever we're doing. So your sleeping accommodations and food are the two extras. The other stuff is the exact same things I'd pack, which is why I say those two bags always go with us. Because that's everything they need for a couple nights to go somewhere. So for, for my boys, it was clothes. I went mm. through a lot of clothes. Mm. I, I would go out and it's just like, I always brought plenty of snacky foods because they, they prefer to snack versus meals. Yep. They, mm. And so I would bring lots of snacks. But my biggest thing was I had a bag of clothes. If I was going out for three days, I had three outfits in, or you know enough for three days. And then I had another bag so Spears. basically I was I was doubled up. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, you're cruising along on the trip, you know, you're you're out on the trail and you just gave your kids some applesauce and half of it's down him. Oh crap, now I need another change of clothes. Or if they're in their diapers, you get those blowouts. <laughs> yep, you do. <laughs> you get those blowouts, and then you're like, okay, well, I need a new, another pair of pants. You if know, you're not a parent, you don't know what a blowout is. Congratulations. <laughs> if you are a parent, and you're watching this video, and you know what a blowout is. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> cool Those emergency. Oh, boy. quick, pull over. There's, there's an off ramp. We got a blowout. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Whole train stops. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so for me, it was the extra clothes, and so, so I, my recommendation is, is if you're bringing your kids out for the first time, double on their clothes. That's my recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Rec yep. So, and then just plenty of snacky foods, but, yeah. Yeah. And it's. It really shouldn't be anything intimidating, I, no. I, I don't think. If anything, it should be something to be excited about because they are going to enjoy it. That's, oh, absolutely. I've never seen anything that gets little ones so engaged in the world around them as yep. just going out and doing something like this. Even yep. the first trip we took with my youngest, she was, I believe, seven months, maybe eight. Yeah. She can't even talk yet. She's just figuring out walking. Like It's all new. Everything's new. But I tell you what, there's nothing quite like that, watching her get excited about, oh, butterfly. You know, butterfly flying through camp. Yeah. World changing. And you don't have to start yeah. off on doing a month-long adventure. No. Just do weekend. No. Start off weekend. Even, even start off just camping in your backyard. It's a blast. It's a great time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just your backyard even. So, well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on this episode of Overland Garage, where we talked about bringing your kids overlanding. So I encourage you, bring your kids. Do the thing. You'll love it. So until next time, <laughs> we'll see you guys out on, your, out on the trail and make sure you bring those kids. <laughs>